Hi guys, it's Mintini here and I'm going to be starting some theory crafting videos regarding control of play. I technically have some videos right now, but they're more me ranting while I'm streaming, which is not quite the same thing as doing a calm, relaxed video uh, on how to consider playing controller. So the first sort of business is what controller do I use? Now, if you're a PS4 user, you're probably thinking, well, I don't have a choice, I don't need to watch this. Um, it's certainly your choice. Um, I will be going over some of the things that different controllers do, so maybe you're curious about that. But even if not, there are third-party controllers for PS4. Admittedly, most of them use the same style as the official one, but there are some that do change. So if you happen to be in the mood for buying another controller or your PS4 that's third party. Um, the ones that are different do tend to be a bit more expensive, but hey, if you play enough, it might be worth it. So first things first, I have four controllers here. All of them technically play Final Fantasy XIV, but some will have different perks about them. So for your controller, you're going to ideally want something that resembles a PS4 controller in the sense that it should have, ideally, a D-pad, some kind of face buttons for them, two analog sticks, maybe some clicks, that's actually optional, you don't really need them but they're nice to have, some kind of start and select, and of course, bunkers, and something like triggers. It doesn't actually have to be a trigger in the sense of thumb down, but you need something there as well. The first control I'm going to show, Blast from the Past, the GameCube controller, right? So if you were to use this, you would not have clicks. No, no clicks, but they're optional. You would also be missing one of the bumpers. Could this still be playable? Actually, yes. You can do with one bumper missing. Um, ideally, maybe whichever one would be the hotbar switch, because if you're going to use something like double cross hotbars and extended, which is using uh, the triggers together, you can actually do without having the hotbar switch button. So instead of using this as the hotbar switch, which is what it would be, uh, you could move the targeting button to here and basically not have a hotbar switch button. And it would technically work, right? So these are the kind of things, if you have a controller for PC, for example, that doesn't quite fit, you could still make it work if you're missing your clicks, your analog clicks, and maybe one of these, and then you just have to remap the ones that are more important. Not the best setup, but it would work. This is something to keep in mind is, do I have enough buttons? If you're missing more than three compared to a PlayStation controller, you probably can't make it work. Three is the most amount of missing I would recommend to have. So now, let's go to controllers that actually have the required number of buttons for full play. Right, this is the PlayStation 4 controller. This is a Xbox 360 controller. I do not have an Xbox One controller, so sorry. But it's pretty much the same. And of course, the Switch Pro controller. A Wii U Pro controller would also work. So beyond the number of buttons, what else do you want to look out for when choosing the controller that's right for you? And this is where PS4 players actually have a little bit of say if you really look at third-party controllers. So the main difference you'll notice, analog stick location, okay? Whereas the Switch is diagonals, same of Xbox 360 and Xbox One as well. This is very old, so if you're looking at it wondering, are those analog sticks completely messed up? Yes, they are. Yes, they most certainly are. Now, this is up to personal preference, but here's some things to keep in mind. When you are using a controller like this, if you need to use 
D-pad while you are moving, right, which will most likely be your left, you need to reach above from your right hand. If you were using this, right, you can't use it. If you had use an ability over here, you'd reach across. This is one of the reasons why when you do get into theory crafting for the layout itself, you should try to keep things away from the d-pad that aren't super important. That, that are super important. You know what I mean. Don't put important stuff on your d-pad. Whereas with these style controllers, you still have to reach across, obviously, if you're doing it. But, now you're going down. Or this way. Try it out. Everyone's different. Personally, I prefer this. I find this a lot less likely to hit things, whereas with this one, a lot of times when I reach over, I will end up hitting the other analog. For Vegas, for some reason, I don't, even though it's still there. So, it will be up to you. Everybody's got different hand sizes, finger sizes, and the next one is finger strength. So, this is where things come in. So, in this case, it's going to be these two against this one. Triggers. Actual triggers. See, this is a trigger. This is also a trigger. This is a bumper trigger. It's actually a bumper on the trigger. Now, if you are a person who does not use the double cross top bar, this will matter a bit less. That would still matter. As you know, in order to use things in Final Fantasy XIV, you do need to activate your hotbar. You would do so by pressing on your trigger. You could also change it to your bumper, so keep that in mind. If you have weaker fingers, like I do, this can get very tiring, and doing it twice can be even more so. But even within that, there are differences. So if you use the Xbox 360 controller, and I don't have an Xbox One controller, so I can't say for sure what would happen regarding what I'm about to mention. But if you were to use this in the game, you actually have to press it pretty much all the way down. Which means that if you're doing it double, you are increasing the amount of time to do it twice. Of course you get faster at it, but still, you have to go all the way. With the PS4 controller, you actually only have to go halfway for it to activate. So you, you can do it like this. It's not so bad, but it's still there. You still have this fact that it's a trigger and you have to press down on it. And with a bumper, well it's almost immediate, right, because it's a bumper. So, this could be better. Now you do have the ability in the game to actually change which ones are used for what. You could put your activation on the bumpers and then put your, what would be on the bumper, which would be your targeting and your hotbar switch on the trigger. Thus eliminating that issue. If you did have one of these controllers and you wanted to have the faster double tap, you could switch them. Um, of course, if you're talking to other people, they might not do that, they might not even realize you can do that, so anytime somebody says, oh, this is, you know, do this combination of buttons to hide your HUD layout, it might be different for you, because most people are using the standard setup as far as the bumpers and the triggers. And that's it when it comes to what do you pick, what do you look out for. Uh, other things you may want to think about would be extra buttons if it even lets you use them. Um, depending on how you're using your controller, you may not have access to these special buttons if you have them once they're actually hooked up. For example, the Switch controller has two extra buttons. I legit cannot use them at all when I play this because in order to use this controller, I have to actually tell my computer, hey, pretend it's an Xbox 360 controller, which obviously doesn't have them, so those buttons are unusable when I play. They just become unusable. But if it has more built-in support, always try it out built-in before you go to an, uh, an emulator to turn it into some other controller. Um, maybe you'll be able to use those extra buttons, put some macros on them, might be useful. 
Um, but for the most part, the three things are, is, are does it have enough button? What kind of analogs do you want? What kind of bumpers or triggers you want? And of course, the last one I didn't mention, but it should be kind of a given. Does it feel good in your hand? Right? Does it make your palms extra sweaty if you use them for a while? Does it make your fingers go numb? Things like that, right? Everybody's a bit different. I, with me, with my smaller hands, very tiny hands, I actually find the bigger controllers to be um, better because even though they're bigger, which you might think small hands are not going to be good for bigger controllers, it actually helps to separate the fingers, right? Because smaller hands, smaller fingers for better circulation. So the bigger ones like the Switch Pro and the Xbox controllers actually make my hands go numb far less often, if ever, compared to the smaller PlayStation controllers. All right, so that's theory crafting regarding which controller to pick. And we'll see you at the next video, probably regarding how to actually do your hotbar setups. Bye!